Okay, we're going to continue in what we call the personal conception of the identity. Our identities are developed as our mind is molded. Um, it begins early on in our adolescence. Uh, as our brain begins taking in things in our adolescence, our identity is developed. Most people don't realize this, but the mind learns in what's called a series of halves. In the first year of life, a person will basically take in 50% of all the knowledge, intelligence, and perceptional information that they will have for the rest of their life. It is then divided by half, and in their second year of life, they'll take in 25% of the sum total of their intelligence, perceptional knowledge, stimulation that which causes them to understand the world around them. In their third year, it'll be 12.5%. Their fourth year, it just keeps going and being divided by halves. So our identity begins developing in our early years. The mind wants to develop an identity. It wants to, to create an image of itself that will not only be able to adapt to its environment, its social surrounding and circumstances, as well as those within its home, but it will also seek to thrive in that environment. Um, Maslow created his famous hierarchy, which is a, a graph that has stood the test of time. It's called Maslow's Hierarchy of Needs. And there are many different ways that it has been shown and developed. But the first, what we call the foundation of the identity, is the physiological needs. Breathing, food, water. Now he has sex there, but actually I disagree with that baser aspect. I do believe the sexual organs should be listed there. Sleep, homeostasis, excretion. These are all parts of the autonomic system of the brain. This is the part of what we call the sympathetic one nervous system and the brain stem all the way up to the top of the three eighths of the brain stem. That's why a person can be brain dead up here but their body's still alive because the brain stem, the sympathetic nervous system, controls all those basic elements that are needed for life. Those happen prior to being delivered in the womb. Um, delivered from the womb. A, a child neonatal will already have the physiological aspects intact. So those are the things that would be based for the basis of the identity upon which everything else will be developed. Now out of that there are certain elements that must be met. For instance, breathing something we all take for granted. But if a person is deprived of being able to breathe, it will mar their identity, the way it develops. For instance, if a child suffocates, and it could be in the crib because of not being able to get something out of its mouth, um, if it happens and a near-death experience occurs, it will cause the mind to disassociate. The trauma will be segregated based within its own modeling system and stored. If it happens more than once, it will develop in the identity. And it will cause a crack, shall we say, in the foundation of that person's identity or a mar. The same thing happens for food. Um, food is a basic life necessity. We must take in uh, elements, we must take in minerals, we must take in things to support our life. If you deprive somebody of food or of water, um, it will mar their identity. That's why early based trauma, neglect, uh, a lack of a proper environment, in, in other words we take having proper heating, cooling, a roof over our heads for granted. But if you deprive a child of that, they're raised on the streets and they suffer and and, and barely make it through winters or through harsh heat, or they're starving at many times in their life, it will create a basis in the no conscious part of the brain, which is where the foundation of the identity is located. There are seven layers to the brain. 
you have the brain stem, which is the seventh layer, and it goes just above the top of the brain stem, where the central fissure union is. That is the seventh layer of the conscious. That is where the foundation is. That is where the survival coping mechanism arises from. That part of the brain will do whatever it takes, overriding every other layer in order to make sure its needs are met for survival. You then have the sixth layer, which is called the oasis. It's where the energy or the effulgence comes out of the brainstem. Brainstem shaped like this, central fissure of the point here. And then just above it is where all the energy is released. And then it severally divides into the various aspects of the brain, the different regions. That oasis is actually the storage point for what we call shells or alternate identities can be created from that point to be divided if there's a need. The main function of the seventh layer, the no conscience, is for homeostasis and survival. It's to keep the body alive. For instance, excretion is one of the things that has to happen. If you plug somebody up, and oftentimes it, there have been people that are tortured, and one of the things they're deprived of is the ability to release excretion. And it's incredibly painful. You can die from it. Uh, somebody's bowels that get packed, it's one of the most painful ways you can die. So the no conscious part of the brain is where the survival coping mechanisms are. It will develop an identity that will either be solid, and it's solid if a person has the ability to breathe, eat, drink on a regular basis as needed, develop the sexual organs properly, and properly means not being molested, not being hurt, not being injured. Because if a child, an infant, prior to the age of, of one year, it primarily in the first six months, is molested, um, it will cause a marring, a crack in that foundation of the identity. And when an identity or a foundation part is cracked, it creates an alternate identity. That's where we get the idea of multiple personalities or what is better termed disassociate identity disorder, where it has disassociated that which has insulted the brain, causing the trauma, wrecking havoc upon the individual's ability for homeostasis, and thus preventing it to properly develop. So, if that happens, a person will not have a solid foundation. But if all the needs are met, the child is loved, nurtured, wanted, taken care of, has contact with its caregiver, its parents or somebody that's taking care of it, eye contact, then it will have a solid foundation. There will be no cracks, there will be no mars, there will be no un, uh, what we call segregational body memories or things that can arise and create phobias later on in life. The second stage is that of security. It's called the safety level. It means security of the body. Um, later on in life, it will mean employment or the ability to provide for oneself or those that are endeared to thee. Uh, the ability to gather resources for survival, for thriving, for just surviving. It includes morality. And morality means the value system. You see, the no conscious part of the brain is the brain stem, the seventh layer, the oasis, which is the sixth layer just above the brain stem, and then Right here, before the hinder part of the brain is developed, we have the fifth layer, the no conscience. That begins developing about the one and a half year mark. That's still part of the no conscience, this is the fifth layer. When somebody is hypnotized, the hypnotist is speaking to the fifth layer of the brain. It's about this deep in the brain, if you were to take a section of it. It's the very bottom, below the uh, center of the cerebral colossum walnut. Uh, the walnut will be uh, in the aspect of the fourth layer of the conscious, which is called the unconscious. A person will have a need for security. They have a need for safety, for protection of the body. If you remove any of those elements, it will once again create an inability to make a solid foundational hierarchy structure. The foundation is the physiological needs, those which are the basic necessities of survival. The next stage is the safety, and that is part of what we call the construction 
of the hierarchy of the identity. It's what's built on the foundation. The second most important thing for a proper identity to be established is safety. If you take away safety from the infant, or at this point the toddler, between one and a half and up to two to three years of age, as the brain is developing between those years, if you remove safety, like in other words, there can be violent outbursts between the parents, fighting or abuse that happens to the child or neglect or cold or hunger or it cries and nobody comes to it. If there's something that is disruptive, traumatic, neglectful, duressful in those, those ages, about one in a, a, about a year and four months all the way up to three years, then what happens is it creates a marred image. The value system, this is where morality comes in, is built within that. That's where we get the idea of religion. That's where we get our concept of God. Um, at that point, whatever the parents speak is the gospel or is believed by that child. Whoever has authority over that child is the primary caregiver, the one that meets its needs. Whatever they say, that brain takes as 100% true. Prior to a year and a half to two years of age, the brain of an infant, a child, adolescent as it is developing, is in a suggestible state. It's like already in a position of hypnosis. Whatever is spoken into that no conscious part of the brain becomes fact for it. It does whatever it takes to meet those demands, needs, or commands at whatever point in time it is given. That's why in mind control programming, they begin within the infant stage. And I will teach on mind control programming later on. Right now, we're going to just do an identity. So, why are we discussing these low-level positions and developments of the brain? Because we can have an individual that lacks the ability for security, that lacks an inability to trust in God the Father. And it could be stemming all the way back to the safety level, the first stage that's built upon the foundation. If a person has a father that's unpredictable or a mother that, that goes into violent, angry outbursts or that is somebody that uses drugs or gets drunk and, and is unpredictable, they won't have security. They won't have a sense of proper reason. They will misunderstand and be confused. And as a result of that, it will create what we call an inability to trust and rely on somebody later on in life. That's why it is so important that a person have a solid, structured, nurturing, loving, caring environment, especially, primarily in its early years. That's why one of the most important things, and Sweden was the first country to, to realize this, is for the mother to be with the child, the mother, for proper brain development during the first two years. Uh, ADD, ADHD is the effect that is caused by the D7, the D9 nodes behind the right prefrontal uh, orbital socket not developing properly because the child has not bonded with a major caregiver. And as a result, it develops attention deficit disorder and or attention hyperactivity disorder deficit disorder. When we get up to the unconscious part of the brain, which is this section here, down to here, um, primarily in the uh, two and a half to four year range, that is where we have the part of the pyramid of what we call love and belonging. Um, friendship, family, sexual intimacy the ability to give oneself in a trusting manner to another and to receive them in a, in a trusting, loving, nurturing manner. It's all developed in that two and a half to fourth year range as that part of the brain develops. In this stage of life, <clears throat> that child needs to one, have friendships. And you say a two and a half to a four year old, yes, four year olds can have friendships with other four year olds. They can develop bonds with somebody that's an outsider of the immediate family circle or the dyadic, triadic, quadrant type of family sitting. They also need to have a security of a family, and that is where they feel wanted, needed, loved, and desired. It is very important that this happens. 
if this does not happen between the two and a half and the four year range, that child, that person will develop a marred identity. And what will happen is they will have an inability that can arise where they are not able to, to trust people enough or they never have long-term friendships or they become, shall we say, dependent upon their family. A person that has an insecurity within the family or a rejection issues um, or detachment issues or disorders will have problems by, by not being able to commit to having their own family structure. They'll always be desirous of their older one, the one they're raised in, but when they get married with their own children, with their own husband or wife, they'll have problems in their unit and they won't know why. And it's because it's in the unconscious part of the brain. And this unconscious part of the brain is where the filtering systems are. The filtering systems engage. And they hold the value systems, what we believe to be true, what we believe to be right or wrong, what is moral, what is immoral. And they separate it and they make decisions on how we are going to respond so that we can, one, develop friendships, so we can please and be a part of our family unit, so that we can later on procure the ability to bond with somebody for sexual intimacy and some say for the act of procreation. On top of that, in what we call the bridge between the unconscious and the conscious, the lowest layer of the conscious is called the anterior aspect of the subconscious. It's the third layer of the brain. In there is where we have the esteem aspect. It is the area of the brain that develops where a person, and this is between the ages of, of four and six, primarily four and seven, circa three to seven, where a person finds their sense of self, their identity. Once again, in mind control programming, you will usually have a three-year-old or a four-year-old that's in charge, and that's because it's at the first point of conception of the self-identity. And it's at that layer that just bridges the unconscious to the anterior aspect of the subconscious. That person will have a development of self, and here is where the actual bud of the identity comes from before the flower blooms. Everything else is the root and the stem, but here's where the bud is. Now, a person needs to have self-esteem at this area developed. They need to be able to have confidence in themselves. If a child is constantly ridiculed, scolded, neglected, simply not being given the ability to do things and receive praise or correction will cause a marring of the identity of self. They need to have the ability for achievements. That's why they take and you give them the building blocks or you give them the set where they put the circle in the circle hole. Each and every one of these. They need to be able to develop the sense of self and achievement. They also learn at that area the respect of others. And that means the placing of others. Their positioning with others. And here is where they also desire for the respect of others. That's why in mind control programming, Though they are being abused and placed into situations and events that are traumatic, wrong or painful, the person will give them accolades and will not ridicule them during that time. They will actually give them accolades and say, good girl, good boy, that's how you do it. You're such a little man or you're a great princess because it develops a self-esteem that even though they may have hatred, they have love. Even though they may have pain, they have joy. It's a confusing and a marring. The last level, which is the subconscious, from which the mind erupts into the full bloom of the present conscience, is where everything comes together. Morality, creativity, spontaneity, problem solving, uh, a lack of prejudice, and an acceptance of facts, living in the real world. That is the outer part that develops between the ages of six and seven. We have a, a, what we call a seeded brain, or in other words, a fully developed brain around the age of seven. That's why a person or a child 
that has had a secure life and all these needs met up until they are considered to be a healthy identity. If anything in that pyramid is not met at one of those different stages of life, it will cause specific predictable patterns later on that will evolve and then will effulge or show and manifest themselves later on in life. It's kind of like programming a computer or hardwiring a computer. What goes into those areas and those facets will determine how the person will react. As I said in the last, in one of my sessions, God has not created us to endure life, but to enjoy it. God is also the God that can heal. He can restore what's been taken away or what we've never had. He can take and mind that, mend that which is broken. And that's why one of the things we need to do in order to have an identity that's established and founded in Jesus Christ is we will confront and deconstruct the false parts of your identity and replace them with the truth. We will confront the faults, we will renounce it, rebuke it, and then we will confess with our mouth what is true according to God's word. Because God can make you the way you should be, the way you want to be. Um, I will continue this lecture in, in lecture number three. I pray and ask that the Lord bless you. In Christ Jesus' name, amen.